from is about to get better. We are here in the presence of the Lord. God's about to do something. I'm excited and I'm just overjoyed with what the Lord is going to be doing right here tonight in your home. So welcome to you. Welcome all over the world. Welcome from every nation in Africa, all over the United Kingdom and right here in the United States of America. We are broadcasting with you from our studios in Naples, Florida. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful two hours together. Jen, I know we're excited. And uh, Prophet Gebhardt is in the house again. Come on, what a night yeah. we're going to have today. Absolutely. I'm, I'm very excited. I, I was early up this morning. I felt like God spoke to me very specifically about today. Yeah. I'm excited about the broadcast. It's going to be good. It. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So welcome. Great to have you with Thank us. You. Jen, are you ready? Oh, I'm always ready. And again, it's such a privilege 
to be able to come into your homes and to be able to bring the Word of God. I actually prayed this morning, even coming here, that there would be great clarity, that you would receive the Word of truth with great clarity in a way that you can literally take it and make it your own. Because that's when it produces evidence that the Holy Spirit is at work in your life. And so that's what our prayer is for you today, that you would receive. In fact, I know in Colossians 2.15, it says, let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. And that is our prayer for you today. Amen, amen. It's truly going to be a great day. Listen, let us know where you're watching from. I'm looking online over here. People are watching literally from all over. But I want to give a one shout out uh, in particular to Amy Angel, all the way in the Seychelles. She's watching in the Seychelles. So great to have you with us. Lee as well in Botswana. Great to have you with us. And uh, I know many more of you are jumping on board. And uh, uh, Minister Ataramise Marshall, all the way from Austin, Texas, in the USA, is also on board watching. So come on, listen, if you're watching in the United States of America, log on to our Facebook page, log on to our YouTube, or let us know on faithnow.com. Remember, we are streaming on faithnow.com, and we are on the events channel on faithnow.com as well, in case we decide to run longer today. Who knows what God's going to do? So uh, if we do have to go off air on the TV broadcast, we will be on faithnow.com on event stream number one. All right, so we're broadcasting there as well. So you can always go over to faithnow.com event stream number one and uh, get us right over there or on the main feed on Faith Now on the TV channel, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, we're broadcasting on X as well, Twitter, as you know it. So we'd love to hear from you. Let us know the country. Let us know the state. Let us know the city. Come on, you can do that. Log on quickly. We're about to praise the Lord a little bit more. We want to hear from you. So come on, let us know where you are watching from. Brooklyn, are you ready for this morning? Yes, sir. You know, thankfulness for the Word of God this morning. I have a scripture from Psalm 119 in my heart that I rejoice in your Word like one who finds great treasure and I know as we we dive into the word today it's going to be like finding precious stones and gems and gold so it's so costly and so precious I couldn't imagine my life without the word of God so I'm looking forward to where the Lord's going to take us today uh, I tell you every day has been a journey and I tell you when the prophet's in the house you never know where God's about to take us but uh, I know something's about to happen F.A. joining us again on the vocals. Are you ready for today? Yes, sir. I'm very expectant. Like I said yesterday, do not touch that dial. Just keep it on. You could have been doing any other thing today, but God brought you to watch this broadcast. I believe the Lord has something special for you today. Just hold on and watch all the way to the end. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. And I know, Steph, you are in the zone today. Are you ready? <laughs> I am in the zone. You know, every time we come, I feel like we're the followers of Jesus that were just waiting in the upper room. And we're just there, just waiting with expectation, not knowing what we're actually waiting for. But we know that He's a big, amazing, mighty God. And we just want to see His glory manifest here. So every day we come with that expectation that He will show up. Amen. Amen. Well, we're looking forward to a great night tonight. I know, Prophet Gebhardt, you are ready. And uh, you got to love the family and the church and people all over. So come on, greet them all as well right now. Well, we want to say welcome, guys. And as you climb on, I see some of the, the churches are climbing on and busy climbing on. I want you to tag somebody into the stream tonight. Tag that family member. Tag that, uh, not just the family, tag other people into it. Tonight's going to be a good night. Jesus wants to bring you back to intimacy. He wants to bring you back to that first love, that first place. And I believe tonight's gonna to be supernatural. I believe that the Lord's gonna deal with certain altars tonight. It's gonna to bring us back to that first place, that place that of overflow, that place of abundance, and that place of rest. Come on. I'm very come excited. On. It's gonna be, it, be a great, great time in the presence of the Lord. Listen, you wanna be a part of it. You wanna stay connected for the whole two hours. Get your communion elements ready. Get your bread in the cup. We're going to break bread and have communion together as we always do on the program. And then as well, we are going to give you an opportunity to sow a seed as we always do. So get ready for that. But Jen, I know God's going to move tonight. You know what? Um, I really felt in my spirit the importance of time. I felt like, you know, yeah. I know even for myself, it's amazing how 
if anything is under attack, or if anything that the enemy would want to steal from you, it is the precious commodity of time. Right. And uh, even everything concerning the principles of God has to do with that. We know there's seed, time, and then harvest. We know whenever we pray and believe in, that's when supernaturally the miracle takes place in our prayers, is when we believe without doubt, whatever we say, it will be ours, is what it says in the Word of God. But then there is a time period to see that reality manifest in our lives as well. But just the same, when we understand how precious it is to spend time in the things of God, there's nothing more valuable in any believer's life than marking off time to hear God's voice, right, time right. to sit under the Word, time to meditate on the things of the Spirit. Because when we do that, we literally set ourselves in motion or position ourselves for the Kingdom of Heaven to be manifest in our lives. But if we don't do that, the enemy will steal that time. And it'll be, you know, we can be pulled in every single direction with all things that are necessary, even doing the good works. You know, all those things are all necessary, but they can never substitute that time spent in the presence of God, meditating on His Word, listening to His voice, just like Mary. Do you remember the Mary and Martha? We often speak about that as well. How Martha was so busy doing the good things, but Jesus said Mary had chosen the better part, come on, the come better on. thing, choosing time to literally sit down in the presence of God and glean His wisdom opening our hearts to His direction, obeying His will. And so I honestly want to just commend every single one of you. I felt the Holy Spirit stir that on the inside of me right now. The fact that you have chosen to take this time to sit and listen to the Word right now in these two hours, I want to promise you this, that you will not be disappointed for doing so. Come because on, everything that happens within this broadcast is absolutely intentional. It is divinely, uh, it's, it's divinely ordained by God. That's probably the best way I can put it. It is not something that we just do to check off the list that it's done, but it is absolutely intentional for you to receive what God wants for you today. Amen. So that is my, I just want to bless you. I want to commend you. I want to thank you with a promise that because you have chosen to take this time to come in and meditate on the things of God, you will receive and you'll receive life and you will receive the answer that you have That's been right. looking for. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, above any other night, I, I have a greater expectancy than every other 1,449 nights before. All right? I do. I do. I come every night ready for what God's going to do. And I want you to get ready. I want you to have that same anticipation because God's going to meet you in a very special place. I'm, I'm, busy, I'm busy looking here and I'm looking at all the comments. So many of you watching from all over. Jill just uh, tuned in and she said, uh, greetings from Mauritius. All right, so she's in Mauritius right now and uh, watching from over there. And then Minister uh, Artemisi Marshall, and I believe he was watching from somewhere in the USA, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, he says, um, Steph, I'm in the zone. All right, so um, he's in the zone as well. He says, I'm in the zone. And uh, that's what it's all about. And then I just want to thank those of you watching on Faith Now. And uh, Denise, great to have, uh, sorry, Dennis, my apologies. Dennis, great to have you with us. And uh, wonderful, welcome, he says to uh, Prophet Gebhardt. And Sylvia is online with us. And uh, Dr. Sinoza is with us on Faith Now. Helen is with us. Helen Fernandez is with us on Faith Now as well. And uh, Malatia Esther, I believe as well. Many of your names coming through. If you are watching on Faith Now, let us know where it is that you're watching from. Come on, put a little comment in the comment section. YouTube, Facebook, X, and around the world. We are going tonight. Welcome to every one of the channels on television. Welcome to Go TV. Welcome in the UK. It's going to be a great night tonight. Come on, guys. Let's praise the Lord a little bit more. 
And uh, we're going to get straight into the Word of the Lord tonight. This is Faith Today. Trust in your name, Jesus. Able to save and deliver us. We put our hope in your name, Jesus. Sing blessing, blessing and honor, glory and power unto our God forever and ever. All of the honor, all of the praise is yours.
feel the power and the presence of the Lord in praise right in this house. And I know it's coming through into every one of your homes around the whole wide world, wherever you're watching from. So many of you watching right now. And, uh, you, you know, Faith Now is just lit up as well. People are, are jumped on all over there. Our events channel is up and running as well. And uh, you can get it on event live stream number one, as well as on our main Faith TV feed, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, X and uh, many different other places wherever you are watching from. So good to have you with us tonight. Now, uh, Pastor, I'm, I'm excited. You know, in 107 days, you and I are going to be together in the Great Faith Dome. Absolutely. And uh, it's going to be a glorious time. What, what, what are you feeling? You know, I, I, always, I always kind of sit here and I... I, you, you know, I'm like a, a bunny rabbit on Duracells. You, you know, where I get excited always about what God's doing. But I don't know how I could come into your home there. I wish I could just come into every one of your homes, stand right there in your living room with you and say to you, Revival X, Revival 10 is going to be one of the greatest one of the most amazing revivals we've ever experienced, ever had. It's going to be on another level, and you need to be there. Absolutely. And it's school holidays. And it's an opportunity for you to visit the Great Faith Dome. And it's an opportunity for all of us to come together from all over the nation of South Africa and literally around the world because that's what's happening. People are coming right from here, from our church this side to be there. People are coming from other churches I'm so excited for it. What is your expectation for Revival 10? Because I mean, you were just sharing some things with me, what you feeling God's wanting to do. And uh, I am just want to really exhort people to register, sign up, become a part, book your hotel, get down to Revival 10. Well, as I said yesterday, I really feel that uh, there's something very unique about this conference. It's something that God's going to do. I, yeah. I feel, uh, and for everybody listening, I, I want to encourage every single person that, as I said yesterday, South Africa is not dead. South Africa is very Come much on. alive. But there's, there's something about heaven interva in, in, invading in a brand new space, a brand new way. And I believe during this conference, it's going to happen. Right. There's something of territory that's going to be taken. I feel that God's going to restore many people back to their first love. And I feel it's a, a time of drinking in from heaven, yeah. a, time yeah. where, a time of refreshment, a time of uh, just aligning the Lord uh, and, and seeing people align. I want to encourage all the ministers that are out there that you register, you know, yeah, bring a yeah, team. Yeah. Uh, I said to Pastor Andre that uh, I have to bring a team. We have to see ministers coming back to the anointing, coming right. back to the presence. Right. We have to see ministries being presence-based. I want to encourage every single person that's online that, that you make time to register. Uh, don't miss this. There's, there's something that God's going to do. I, I feel like there's a new oil, there's a new wine, there's a new right, dimension right. that God's going to pour out. That's, that's what I have in my spirit. There, there's a new level, there's a, there's a new dimension. And if I may, I almost want to say a time of visitation. That's what I, I feel. I, I really yeah, believe yeah. that the Lord wants to visit South Africa. And, uh, and I want to encourage you, if you can put, your, put that time aside, if you can register, bring that team. Listen, there's nothing like setting time aside for the presence of God. That's right. There's nothing That's right. like putting time aside and just hitting that pause button. A time to get filled, a time to get renewed, and just a time to get back to the, the first things. I, I feel that. I feel that's going to be a time of first things. God's going to restore the order. And uh, from that place, the Spirit of the Lord's going to be poured out. I, I really believe that of all yeah, of my heart. Yeah. You know, we, we, we're going to have a number of different speakers um, through the entire 10 days. This time it's 10 days, two full weekends. All right, we're starting on Friday the 21st in the morning. First time we've ever started a conference in the morning. We're starting on Friday morning in East London, Buffalo City, uh, right there in the East Cape in the Great Faith Dome. And we're going to be running from Friday morning all the way through till Sunday night, the 30th. Mm. All right, 10 days, 10 hours a day. Now we are going to broadcast. 
We are going to broadcast it. But don't stay away. If you, I, I want you to put your faith in a place of a, Lord, I, I need to be there. I, I don't want you to stay away because, you know, the number one reason people stay away is money. That's it. There, there, there's really no other reason. If, if you had money to be able to do it, you would, you would sign up. And then with the money comes, well, I don't want to take leave to go to a conference. I'd rather take leave to go to the beach. All right. And uh, that, that's the second problem that people have in their minds. Take unpaid leave. If you, if you really want to keep your beach leave to go to the beach, take unpaid leave. Just say to your boss, I need two, three days off. Come and join us first weekend or second weekend or midweek, whenever. You know, taking two or three days off, you can almost get five days with us at the conference. I know it's 10 days, even if you came for five. Even if you booked, and if you booked your tickets now, flying in and out, they're a lot cheaper than if you booked them last minute. If you book your hotel now, you'll get them cheaper than last minute. All right, I, I really want to encourage you by faith, believe God, to come and be a part. Revival X is coming to you. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we walk victorious. When His fame spreads, multitudes come. That's the birth of revival. We are kings and priests, and we are taking back the dominion. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Back to the Bible. We need to know the Word of God. This is the sound of revival. Revival is not quiet. Revival is loud. Come on. This is a spirit flow. You can't grab it with your mind. You have to grab it with your heart. I know that I have every devil under my feet. Revival X is coming to you. All right, there you have it. Revival X is coming. We want you to be a part of it. Uh, it's truly going to be amazing. You know, um, we're putting up 195 flags mm. inside the Faith Dome. And uh, we're going to just encompass the whole dome with every one of the nations that we reach. I want you to understand, we reach as a network right now on recorded fact, 195 nations of the world. And, um, and, and I, I want you, I want you to understand God's going to do something. Yes, we're going to broadcast it. Yes, hundreds will be on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Faith Now, all that sort of thing. All of that's going to be taking place. But there's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord yourself when you walk in. And uh, Pastor Gebhardt, you walked into the Faith Dome for the first time. Tell me what that felt like. It felt like an open heaven, to be honest. Yeah. Um, as I, even, even last night as we we're ministering, yeah, but there's very specific, it's an open heaven. Uh, open heaven is a place where God decides to intervene, intersect, and it's a place of not just, it's a place of commerce. It's a place where God wants to do business. Come on. And when I was at the faith term, I felt like it's a place of commerce, a place where the Lord wants to do, you know, that uh, up and down as the scriptures declare. Ascending and descending and there's an open heaven there most most definitely Come on. I could feel it I could feel that the Lord the Lord wants to do business You know, there's something when you make a demand upon God right. when there's a hunger right. and a thirst in actual fact in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse number 2 and 3 the Bible says that the hunger for God produces the wonders of God The hunger produces wonder wow. and uh, wow. I believe that it's the hungry of heart that will see the wonders of God. Wow. Because a hungry person, it works like this, a hungry person is a person of out manners. Right. They, they make a demand. They, they yeah, want yeah, to yeah. receive something. They, and, I, and I believe that as you place a demand, even on this conference, even tonight, I feel that there's a demand, there's a demand that has That's to be right. placed right. upon the Lord. Listen, Jesus does not, not walk past people that are hungry and thirsty. He'll break the rules to get you touched. So he will go beyond certain things to see you delivered. And I feel tonight, yeah. even I, I just feel the wave of the Spirit of the Lord in, in the meeting tonight. Yeah, I can sense the Spirit of the Lord. And I want you to, to make a demand tonight. I want you there we are because I, I believe God's going to break down altars tonight. I believe that the Lord's going to shift you away from an altar of lack, an altar of not enough, an altar 
and get you back into that covenant of promise, that covenant of abundance, that covenant of overflow, that covenant of wealth. So I feel the Lord said to me, I felt the Lord say, I want to reset my people's hearts because I'm going to move. And um, we know when the Spirit of the Lord starts to move, you're not going to stop it. Um, And I'm excited. I I want to see the nation of South Africa under revival. I want to see the Spirit of the Lord move. Yeah. You know, Pasana, when, when I grew up, we grew up under the glory of the Lord. We grew up in the days of revival. Right. We have to see it again. It's coming. We have to yeah. see it again. Yeah. And yeah. I, I feel like, and I, and I said it to you yesterday, I feel like the Lord has set time aside. He says, set time aside. And mm-hmm. even with us here, I, I feel like the Lord is saying, set this time aside. And that's why I just want to encourage every single person that's online tonight that set some time aside. I. I feel like you have to go the extra mile tonight yes. and uh, yeah, yeah. invite that person, get them on. I feel like the Lord is saying, and I'm going to show you one or two things later on in, out of Scripture, but I, I feel like God wants to bring us to that first place. You see, yeah, when the yeah, Lord yeah. is first, yeah. He can establish His kingdom. And we want to see the kingdom being established. We want to see the kingdom thriving. That's what the Lord wants. He wants to get you back to that place that you can confidently and boldly say, I am the one that Jesus loves because it's out of that place of the scripture says we're rooted and grounded in love, right? Yeah. Right. And right. Um, right. I feel that tonight's going to be an exceptional night. I, I just also want to say there's something about the kids that's going to happen at, at this uh, conference. There's, there's a movement that's going to happen. I've been prophesying for quite a while that I saw movement of God happening on schools, uh, high schools, primary schools, universities. I want to declare that again tonight, that we will see a movement of God's Spirit on the youth. That the enemy, Satan, will not have the final say. The devil will not have the final dictate over the children. God is about to clear up the confusion and He's going to do it by His Spirit. And so get ready, even if you're kids, God's going to move on. I'm telling you, we're going to see kids coming full of the power of God. Um, doing signs, wonders, miracles. So I'm, I'm and, that, very and, that, and that's the thing. Even at Revival X, we've got the kids' movement that is taking place. Fine. The kids' revival is taking place at the same time. It's vacation, it's holidays. They can come down, be a part, register today. Register. Set that time aside as a family and say, out of the whole year, this is the week I want to be in the presence of the Lord. And uh, this is a place where I want to I want to be gathered with others. Something's going to happen right over there. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. But tonight I'm excited about what God's going to do right here. I feel His presence. So Absolutely. Strong. Even before we started the broadcast, I, I honestly had um, just such a wonderful sense of purpose. This is a time of purpose. The Holy Spirit is wanting to get our attention. Yeah. And really He's been speaking so clearly about our time, purposefully taking time to listen to Him. Do you know, um, I loved what you said about the open heaven and, and the transactions and the things that, you know, commerce or whatever what God does. And this is the scripture that I actually heard this morning in a teaching and it really, I, I took note of it because I've heard it before, but I, I put it down here today as well. In Psalm 115, verse 16, it says, The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth has He given to the children of men. You know, God wants to do things here. We know Jesus told us that we to pray, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. We have a mandate that we need to complete in the time that we have left here. And I do believe there is such an urgency of time right now. Time sensitivity is what we are working with right right now. In the last of the very last, (laughs) last moments um, of the the last days. That's where we are right now. And so we are, uh, if I could say this, do you know, if, if, if I could somehow convey the urgency that I feel in my spirit right now to every believer is to just um, tune in, tune in to what the Spirit of God wants to do right now together. I feel like it, like God is calling a unity, an absolute unity in the Spirit right now to zone into Him, 
to really listen to what He wants to do through His church today. These are the days where we have to be 100% dependent on the Spirit of God. And throughout the, the New Testament, throughout all of Paul's teachings, even with Jesus before He left, He put such emphasis on the gift that God has given us, the church, and that is the Holy Spirit. And so I do believe this, wow, just such an overwhelming urgency that we are to pay attention, take time, pay attention to let our spirits come in unity. You know, our, you know, your spirit is one with the Holy Spirit. That's what it says in the Word. But I do believe that God wants to do things in this earth, but it's going to be done through the authority of the believer. And so as long as we are in tune with the Holy Spirit, we walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit, whatever He tells us to do, we can literally begin to declare those things. Jesus taught us how to do it. He said, anything I do, I only do what I see my Father do. I only say what I hear my Father say. And we have been given that same authority as believers. So if I could say anything, it is this. Take your mind off of your own considerations. Take your mind off of every other earthly distraction and choose this time to come into that accuracy, that acute, um, acute uh, clarity of what the Holy Spirit wants to tell you right now. So that all we hear is what the Spirit of God wants to relate to our spirits. So that is all that we speak out. That's all that we say. Even the time in the conference that we're gonna have together, all of those hours are literally just time set aside to get into the habit, a well-developed habit of listening to the Holy Spirit. Let that be our number one priority. And even in the time we're going into now, if we enter into a time of worship, the same thing, let's master the skill of quietening the flesh, of putting the flesh down and fine tuning the hearing skills. You have ears and when you have ears in the Spirit, you see in the Spirit. And I do believe that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do to every believer. Don't ever feel that you are unqualified or unskilled or untrained in being able to take your position as the body of Christ. You absolutely, the moment you became born again, you were given His Spirit. You were given the ears to hear and see the things of the Spirit Hallelujah. so that you can declare those things. So I, I, that's my attention. I feel like this whole big trumpet sounding to the church. Pay attention, give heed to what the Spirit of God wants for you to hear and declare even now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lift your hands wherever you are right now. Come on, get your heart set. Get ready for what God's about to do. I'm telling you, we're about to step into a flow tonight. You are not tuned in here by accident. You are here by divine appointment. God is wanting to do something tonight. He's wanting to come through these airwaves right into your home, right there where you are. I'm telling you, the fire of God is gonna come right from this place where we are in Naples, Florida, right through these airwaves into your life and into your home, anywhere in the world. No matter what time of the day it is, makes no difference. God's gonna meet you. So I want you to forget about everything else. And I want us now, we've got one hour, 20 minutes left of this program. I want us to push in. And I want us to step into all that God's got for us. So come on, let's begin to worship right now. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. I am an instrument of exaltation And I was born to lift Your name above all names You hear the melody of all creation But there's a song of praise that all Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no one, only you, Jesus. Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no Of 
the ages, yet you chose to make my heart your dwelling place. And you healed my brokenness, showed me your glory. So I have songs of thanks, not even angels sing. Oh, who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no one, there is no one, only you, Jesus. Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no one, only you, Jesus. Who else is worthy? Christ be lifted up Holy, holy Lamb of God Anointed one Who was and is and is to come Seated on the throne above Holy, you're holy Righteous one who shed his love Who proved to us our Father's love Jesus Christ be lifted Yeah. 
presence is here tonight. His presence is here. Prophet Gebar, just flow, just flow us wherever you want to go tonight. I just feel whatever God wants to do. I want us just to, just on the skis. Can we just, can we just press in? Can we just press in? Can we just press in? Everybody that's online, I want you just to press in this. As we were just sitting here, the word of the Lord comes to me. Come on, let's sing in the spirit. Come on, let's sing in the spirit. Oh, welcome, Holy Spirit. Narayana, <laughs> 
I hear this Prabhu Lord say to me that in this hour I'm releasing an end time harvest. I'm releasing harvesters to come with me. I feel this Prabhu Lord is saying to me tonight that in a fresh way I, I am releasing the end time harvest. And right now I'm positioning sons and daughters that will be part of the latter final harvest of this earth. And there we are, I, I feel the Lord is calling sons and daughters back to play, that place of intimacy and say, hear the cry, hear the cry of the lost, hear the cry of the destitute. But right now I'm positioning my children to take in this harvest. And know even this, that even during this event that is coming, that you will see a harvest that is unprecedented. But I am releasing the harvest in the season. And I am repositioning sons and daughters. I, even in this night, I will move upon you afresh and anew. Even in this moment, I will move upon you like a, a fresh mighty wind. And that, that was dead, that was dormant, that will come alive once again. I'm restoring first loves. I'm restoring fresh oil. I'm restoring a passion for my king and the kingdom, for my people like no other hour, says the Spirit of the Lord. And you will see a mighty wave coming across America, it will be like a tidal wave of the Spirit of the Lord. It will touch South Africa and it will go around the continents of this world. For the Lord will move afresh and anew. And I will use those that is called the outcast, those that seems like they don't have it all together again. See now how I do something upon the earth that will amaze many. Yes, it will. For you will see a fresh outpouring and you will see a fresh movement of my Spirit. It will come suddenly. It will be suddenly. You will have church and suddenly I will be amongst you. You will have your normal meetings and suddenly I will be present. You will have your normal things and I tell you suddenly, I am the God of suddenly. I'm the God of interruption. I'm the God that makes the impossible possible. I'm the God that takes the natural and makes it supernatural. But even now, even now I'm calling sons and daughters back. I'm calling them to that place, that first love, that first place of divine intimacy. And there we are tonight. I want you to raise your hands right now. I, I, I can feel the Spirit of the Lord upon me. Jesus, I, I want to declare, Lord, because I see how many sons and daughters, Lord, they are chained up. Yeah, yeah. They are chained up, Lord. And I pray in this night, Lord, I declare from this platform that chains will break and systems and, Lord, fetters will snap off people in this moment, Lord. There are people, who, Lord, I cough off the gift that is inside of you. I call that forth once again in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. That that gift will come alive. No longer cast aside, no longer destitute, no longer alone. No, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say to me that in this night, that that I've placed inside of your son, that I've placed inside of your daughter, that's going to come alive once now. Once again, it's going to live. It's going to be full of the Holy Spirit and full of fire. There's ministers on here tonight. I feel the Lord says, back, get back into the fire. Get back into intimacy. Get back into the first place, that first love. I can hear the call of the Master. I can hear His call. Come back. Come back to that first place. And I, I release this word over you in this night. See now, I do a new thing. See now. Even, I see this again. See now, the children shall prophesy. The children shall move mightily. Mightily. There will be a movement. I see a whirlwind happening in East London. I see a whirlwind of God's Spirit coming to South Africa. I see a whirlwind of cleansing, a whirlwind of purification, a whirlwind. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say to me, you will see, literally you will see, you will see a cleansing happening. You will see a purification. And you will see a worshipping like there has no been in the times before. I will move upon the children, yes I will. I will restore children. And I put my hand upon your family tonight, says the Spirit of God. I see families coming under the power of God. I see families being restored. 
I hear the Lord say, there, there, there was luck. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift that season of your life. I'm going to shift that season because I'm reintroducing to you back to my spirit, back to that first love, back to the fountain of living water living inside of you. Jesus is breaking down altars again tonight. You see, the Lord wants you to know that He's not just for you, He's in love with you. I'll say that again. He's not for you, He's in love with you. And He wants you and He desires you. But right now, I want to be as bold. I, I feel the Lord is saying to me, He's calling harvesters right now. Listen, the harvest is massive. We have a massive task on our hands. There are billions of people that need to know Jesus. Our time is running out. Listen, this is, this is not the last of the, this is the final moments of the last of the last. And so in this moment, I, I feel the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me that He is he's lining up harvesters. And as you are on the screen tonight, I, I feel all our viewers, I feel like you have to put your hand up and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Use me. Like Isaiah said, Lord, I'm undone. I'm not clean. I'm not pure. But I feel the Spirit of the Lord say, will you be a part of this end time wave? Will you be a part of this end time movement? Will you say yes to me? Will you say yes that I can take? You see, this is the thing about God's grace. God's grace makes ordinary people extraordinary people. It qualifies the unqualified. And I, I feel like there we are right now. I'm looking at all the monitors here. I, I feel like right now you have to say yes. If you feel the Spirit of the Lord like we're feeling the Spirit of God, you have to say yes to that. You say, Lord, here am I. I present myself. I present my family. I present my loved ones. Lord, here am I. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. There's business people watching me right now. And the Lord is seeing you. You can be used by the Lord. God wants to move with you and shift you. There's moms that are watching right now. They're exactly the same. And I, I want you just to comment and say, this is me, Lord. Here am I. Just want you to throw that into the comment section for me. Just to say, here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Come on, they, they, I, see, I see ministries being restored. I, I feel the Lord is saying, you have to say this night, you have to say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Father, I release that word. I release that word. Father, I see this hour clock in front of me. And Father, I see how you, how you accelerate time. I want to declare the word of the Lord of your life tonight that accelerate the time is here. Amen. Accelerate the time is here. Amen. God is going to compound time. And I feel the Lord says, I'm going to redeem the time. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesia, uh, uh, Ephesians, redeeming the time for the days are evil. I feel the Lord is saying to me, I'm the only one that can buy back time. That's right. Because I'm outside of time. I'm the eternal God. I'm the eternal one. There we are tonight. I feel like you have to just lift your hands and say, Lord, give me time back. I feel Jesus is giving time back. Listen to me, folks. The, these things are not planned. We, these things are all birthed by the Spirit of the Lord. But I feel God is saying to me, I'm going to give you time back. Time. There's years that the Lord wants to restore to you tonight. And can I declare that over your life? Can I pray that over your life that the Lord will restore time to you? Right there we are at. There's people watching me. I, I feel like the Lord is saying to me, time is coming back. Jesus. It's going to be restored. It's going to be restored. Father, in the precious, precious Jesus name, name of Jesus. Thank Father, I declare a word. The time shall be restored Amen. right now Amen. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Return the clock, Father. Turn back time. Hallelujah. Lord, you are outside of time. And Lord, I... I, I I sense it so strongly in my spirit, redeeming the time. God's going to redeem the time tonight. There's places that were dead and dormant. I feel the Lord says, no, no, I will I redeem that time. And Father, I, I declare that this evening, the time shall be redeemed Jesus. in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Time shall be redeemed in Jesus' name. And there where there's been evil reports, I... I feel the Lord is saying to me, there where there's been evil reports out, I'm turning the report around. Hallelujah. I'm turning the report around. Hallelujah. It's going to be a good report. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a report full of goodness, faithfulness, and the majestic goodness of God. Thank you, Lord. And if you've received a, a bad report, I, I feel the Lord is saying to me, I'm turning the report around. I'm, returning, I'm turning the medical report around. I'm, I'm turning that diagnosis around. I'm turning the word of man around. 
Am I not God? Can I not do this? Of course I can. If that's you tonight, I, I want you just to receive that and say, Lord, here am I. I receive the good report. Thank you. Oh, I sense the presence of the Lord, yeah. Sense the presence of the Lord. Jesus. Lord, come and rest upon us. Come and rest upon us, Lord. We want to host more of you, God. Lord, the greatest privilege we have in this life is to host the presence of the Lord. Father, make us host more. Lord, make us more aware of you. Make us more, more in love, Lord. Jesus, come and rest, Lord. Holy Spirit, I, I sense you so much here, Lord. Come and rest, Holy Spirit. Prince of Peace, come and rest of us. Come and rest. I'm destroying the altars that was built, says the Lord. I'm taking down altars tonight and I'm erecting my word in your life. It will stand. It's things that's been generational in families and I see the altars break. I sense how the Lord is breaking these altars. It will just snap off. Things that's been with your family for long, I feel the Lord say, no, no, I, I'm breaking down altars. Uh, these things have been standing with you for long. I, it's going to be moved tonight. I want you there, we are. I, and maybe in here we can do the same. I, I feel like just to ask the Spirit of the Lord to come and rest with you. Yes. Something about the dove, the Holy Spirit, He wants the rest of us. Think about it. It's, it's, it's a massive thought. The God of the universe wants the rest of you. Come on, think of that. There we are. Why don't you just lift your hand just for a moment and, and we just say that. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, Thank you that you're yeah, present, yeah, Lord. Yeah. Thank you that you're present, Lord. Thank you that you're present. Come and rest of us, Lord. Come and rest of us. Come and rest of us. In Jesus' name. Maybe we can just sing that song, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Thank you, Lord. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be Thank you that you chose us. Lord, I pray, what's the odds, Lord, about eight billion people and you choose us to host you? Yes. Come on, come on. <laughs> That's a massive thought, Lord. You chose us. Make us host small, God. Make us host small. Lord, in this moment, we turn our affection to Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Jesus, we love you, Lord. Lord, we love you. We love you. We pour our affection upon you. We pour our affection upon you, Lord. We pour our affection. Like oil upon your feet, Lord. We just pour our love upon you, Lord. We want you to know, Lord, that nothing satisfies our souls like you do. Jesus, you are the lover of my soul. And Lord, we just come to, to pour our oil upon you, Lord. We come to break our alabaster jars, Lord, to make the exchange. Lord, because we have, we've got oil, Lord, but this oil doesn't, 
doesn't fix like that lady, Lord, her perfume fixed her on the outside, but she knew that you carried the oil that fixes on the inside and transformed from the inner man out. And so, Jesus, we just come over alabaster jars tonight, Lord, and we, we break the jar upon you, Lord. Lord, it's an act of covenant. It's an act, act of boldness, Lord, where we say, Jesus, we, we might not want to make an exchange. Listen, folks, I feel Jesus is making the invitation tonight, the, the, that exchange, the, the invitation of change from heaviness to freedom. Yes. <laughs> from a spirit of heaviness to joy. Amen. Come on, there's, there's a fresh joy. There's a fresh laughter. There's a, there's a fresh joy that God wants to restore to you. I, I sense that I feel so much. Jesus said, come and make, make an exchange of me. My oil will not run out. My, my river will not run dry. My fountain will have no ceasing in your life. Yes, says the Spirit of the Lord. Come and make an exchange of me. Come, come and make an exchange because I, my burden is easy and my yoke is easy because I have invited you to that place of rest. Come, 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 come. I want you to just throw that out. Say, Lord, I, I'm making the exchange, Jesus. I'm making the exchange, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the exchange, Lord. Thank you for the exchange. We love you, Lord. I want you to type into the comments, comment section, say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah. You know, there's a song that sings, I love you, I love you, I love you. It's that song that, and as you, there we are, I, I want you just to say that to the Lord before I just step into it. Let's love the Lord. Come on, let's love the Lord. we share tonight, I, I feel the Lord is wanting that first place again, that yeah. first place of love, that first place of admiration there. There's a scripture that actually speaks of that in Genesis chapter number 22 and, and verse 2, and I, I feel like the Lord is just taking me there. I, I prepared, it's amazing how the Lord can just shift yeah. things there. Yes. <laughs> so as we were sitting, I, and God just takes me back to this, and and. Uh, I want us just maybe to go there. Genesis chapter number 22 and verse number 2. It says this, and it said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, the one who you love. Look at that. The one you love. Yeah. And get thee to the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell you. And I want you just to see something. The Lord says to Abraham, it says, Take now thy son, thy only son, the one you love. But I want you to see something that stands out here is that God is saying your, your only son, but that's not the only son. That's right. That uh, Isaac was not the only son. Ishmael was there. Yeah. But God says something. God says, take now thy son, thy only son, the one you love. In other words, God, God wanted that first place again. You see, Abraham right. reached that place where he made an exchange somewhere with the Lord, where, where he started to love his son more than what he loved the Lord. And God challenges him and, it, and says, God says to him, he says, take down thy son, thy only son, the one you love, and bring him up as an as a offering before me. And as I looked at the scripture again, just now, the, as the Spirit of the Lord just spoke to me also this morning, I, I felt like the Lord was just saying to me again that in this piece of scripture, what, what's, so, what's, so, what's so powerful is that this is a place of exchange where, where the Lord is saying, because for, for Abraham to give Isaac, he was literally giving up the promise. Right. Because how would, how would the promise of God come through Abraham unless he had Isaac? So he had to give up Isaac. Right. And 
What is amazing for me is, is that God was asking for that first place. He was, telling, he was telling Abraham, Abraham, I want your Isaac because it's the one you love. Mm. And then we know the scripture goes on and, and just stay with me for a moment because I, I want you to see something here. We, we see the scripture where the Bible says that Abraham is obedient to God. He, he takes Isaac. He takes him up onto the Mount of Moriah and just before, and listen to me carefully, just before he's about to, to offer him up, the word of the Lord comes to him again. Or the angel of the Lord stops him and it says this in Genesis chapter number 22, verse number 12. Folks, listen to carefully. It says, and he said, do not lay your hand on your lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear me. Hmm. Right. Seeing that you've not withheld your son, your only son from me. I want, I want you to see something. God likens the fear of God to what we place first. So whatever is first in your life right. is what you see as the most important part of your life. And God says, listen, that the fear of the Lord, please listen to me, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord, I say again, is the beginning of wisdom. Why do we need wisdom? Because without wisdom, nobody will understand God and the depths of what He has available for us. And as I was looking into it, the, the, the Lord spoke to me here and I, I want us just to see this because it, it's, so, it's so powerful. Again, it says in Genesis chapter number 22 and verse number 14, it says, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it said to this day, it is the Mount of the Lord. I, I want you just to see here, there's a pattern here. The pattern is, is that Abraham has to offer up Isaac. Because God says, I want you to give me the one you love. I just want to read the scripture again. Because it's powerful. It said, and he said to them, take now thy son, thy only son, whom thou love. And get to the land of Moriah. You see, what we sometimes do, we sometimes place things in our lives as first. We sometimes put other things first. But God doesn't want anything to have the place of first. God wants us to have him as first. Because it's this place that the scriptures declare that I want you to see something here. You can only access the covenant of Jehovah Jireh if the Lord is first. Right. You cannot access that. You cannot say Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider, unless the Lord is first. Right. And I want to encourage you today that remember the Bible says that seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Right. That word first, by the way, means it's a building block. In other words, if God is not first in your life, what happens, the kingdom cannot come. The kingdom cannot be built. The kingdom cannot be established. But when, when the kingdom is first, when Jesus is first, I don't know if this speaks here, Pastor Andre, but I, if the Lord is first in your life, God can add all other things. But it's that contest of what is first. You know, it's so easy to displace God. It's so easy to move God away from, from that place where He's first. Right. But God wants that first place. He's, he's right. calling us back to that place of intimacy. You see, with the lady of the alabaster jaw, so, such a beautiful picture for me, because the lady of the alabaster jaw, and the alabaster jaw was something that, uh, that was used, of course, to, to produce perfume. But when you break an alabaster jaw, it was a sign of covenant. Right. So, what the lady was busy saying, she was making covenant with the Lord. She was declaring that the Lord will become not just the source, but she was breaking herself away from everything she knew. Come on. Declaring covenant. Right. Saying that the Lord is the source. The Lord is the one that cleanses. And I feel that for, for many people on tonight that you must make that covenant with the Lord again. You must come and break that alabaster jar. So good. You must be the one. Because here's the thing I want you to see here. Here's the X factor of God, if I can name it like that. Is that as Abram was climbing the one side of that mountain with his son, on the other side, a ram was climbing. Mm -hmm. If you study rams, rams don't climb mountains. They don't. Right. Right. Because on the one side where Abram was going up, on the other side, that ram was climbing up. And they met at the place of obedience. That's what God did. And I want you to understand that, that God wants to meet you at a place called obedience, where He can do the supernatural.
But you have to place him first. Right. You see, and Pastor Jenny, I, I, you said it in the beginning. There's a, there's a timing to this. In Genesis chapter 4, verse number 3, um, I didn't even know we we're going to go there today. But I just put this in this morning as the Lord spoke to me. It says, And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. But verse number 4 says, And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and right. his offering. Right. In other words, there's an appointed time. God wants first. The reason why the Lord rejected Cain is not because his offering was bad. It was the contest of first. Correct. God doesn't want the rest. God wants first. first. Right. Abel, Abel brought what was first. Abram fell in love with what was first. And so God then required what was first. I want you to note something here. Whatever you place first, God's going to put a demand to. Praise Come on. Because Come on. He wants that position. It's that, right. that call of intimacy. Right. It's that call of passion. And I, I want to ask you tonight again is that, are you still in love of Jesus? Are you still in love of the Lord? Really in love of the Lord? Has it become about what He can do for you? <laughs> or is it rather who He is? It's very good. Can I just ask that question again? Are you still in love of Jesus? I don't mean for what He can do for you. I don't mean that He can heal you. I don't mean that He can supply for you. I mean, are you still in love of the King? Just the King. Because He's in love of you. And He wants to call you back to that place of deep intimacy of Him. He wants to bring you back. Because it's that place that God can release that Jehovah Jireh, where it doesn't just become the source of finances, we, we, we sometimes don't understand. He wants to give peace. He wants to give joy. He wants to give wholeness. He's the God that restores. But are you still in love of the Lord? And I feel like tonight the Lord is sharing with me that God says, listen, I, if you are willing, if you are willing to come and break the alabaster jar, what's interesting about that story, by the way, is that Jesus does not speak at all to the lady that breaks the alabaster jar. At all. There's no communication that's happening. There's no, yeah, yeah. There's no dialogue because it's an act of worship. She's worshiping the Lord. You, you see, we have to be very, very careful when we despise worshipers. Right, right. The power of worship. Very, very powerful. In actual fact, we, we see this um, where also in the story, I'm I, I just thinking about that right now, in the story of Lazarus. Where Jesus says the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And we see, and this is, this is so, so, so important to note, that the Bible says that as Jesus comes four, four days later, that uh, first and foremost, Martha goes on. But then the Bible says that Mary goes on. But the posture is different with the two of them. Martha, with her posture, she's standing when she speaks to the Lord. But Mary... She bows down and she worships the Lord. And the word Mary means rebellion. It means, in other words, when rebellion bounds down, Jesus shifts from, I am the resurrection and the life with Martha, and He shifts to, where have you laid Him? See, the resurrection power lies in the worshiper understanding who Jesus is. See, often what we want to do, we want to, we want to tell the Lord how much we love Him. And in actual fact, it's the other way around because when the sisters call upon Jesus, they don't, they don't say, Lord, the one that's done the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the to-do list. That, that's not what he said. It's, Lord, the one you love right. is sick. And I, and I believe with all of my heart that that's our conference. That's, that's the place of authority that I am the one he that Jesus loves. Wow. Come on. Come so on. any other identity... Wow. Is pseudo. Any other identity is fake. And I, I don't know if you sense it, Pozana, but I, Pozana, but I, I feel like the, the enemy has been so successful in giving pseudo personalities Come on. Mm -hmm. and making us not being rooted and grounded out of love. Because being rooted and grounded out of love, that's the real identity. I am the one that Jesus loves. <laughs> I am the one that he's in love with. And if I'm the one that Jesus loves, then everything else that he, that can be bestowed upon me is simply because I'm loved. I'm loved by God. I want to almost say it like this, I'm scandalously loved by the Lord. Come on, come on. But I, I, I feel like tonight the Lord wants to restore this to us because 
the, the truth is, folks, listen to me, is that the, the Spirit of the Lord wants to restore first love again. I mentioned it yesterday, but I, I, I think we sometimes misquote this in Scripture. We think that to be lukewarm means that we're not in love. No, lukewarm means that you have fallen away from the source. Right. That's right. You have That's right. distanced yourself from the source. That's right. And so God wants to bring us back to the source of things. The Lord, as, as with Abram, He wants to bring us to the heart of it all. Because at this place, and I, as I see the names running, I... I feel like the Lord is restoring people to their first love. And, and maybe I can right now as the Spirit of God is just here. I, I feel like God wants to restore that first place. Come on. That place Come on. of intimacy. That's right. That place that you can break off all the, all the pseudo words, all the, all the other suggestions that the enemy might have had over your life. That you can say, Lord, I, I'm returning to my first love again. The place that, you know, the father said this about Jesus. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Please note that Jesus gets a title before he does anything. So we are not human doers, we're human beings. It's not what I have, it's who I have. Say that again. It's not what I have, it's who I have. Amen. Am I a carrier of the spirit of the Lord? Am I a, a carrier of that first love? And I, and I see as the people are commenting, I... I want, to, I, want to, I want you to declare that. Declare tonight that I am the one that Jesus loves. Because the Lord wants to still stop you. I, I feel prophetically to say to you right now, I feel the Lord saying to me, I want to stop for you. I want to stop for you. If you need the Lord to stop for you, the, the lady of the issue of blood, she made a demand upon the Lord. And that demand that she placed upon the Lord was so, was so she was so hungry, Jesus stopped. And Jesus, in actual fact, shouldn't have stopped. But he stopped, stopped for her. And I, I feel like I, I want to just minister prophetically, if I may, at this place where I feel like the Lord wants to stop for you. And the Lord is turning around for you again. And there we are. Maybe you can comment your name and just say, Lord, I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one, Lord. Stop for me again. And that the Lord can return that, that first love. You see, because out of, that, out of that love comes bold faith. Ridiculous faith comes out of the place of love. So maybe you can comment that. Out, and I want to just pray for you and declare a prophetic word of your life. That, that first fire, that first love, that, that will be restored to you. Come on, there we are. Why don't you just lift your hands quickly that, I, that we can just declare the out of your life. That God will restore that first place. And then I just want to share one or two things with you. I, Father, I want to thank you right now in the precious name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, thank you that people can come back to their first love. Yes, Jesus. To be rooted and grounded in love. Thank you, Jesus, that we don't need to live by a pseudo personality. A pseudo, Lord, place of departure. Mm -hmm. For see now, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, see now, I'm restoring to you that first place. Yes. I'm restoring to you that, that first place of love and intimacy. Jesus, thank you. And you will function out of this place. And you will know that you are the one that I love. You will know that I am the one that is in love with you. And as you make that exchange with me tonight, I feel the Lord is saying to, that, to me that, come and make the exchange. Come and make the exchange. Come and, come and make that exchange with me. Come and... Bring it all back once again back to me so that I can shift it to you. And in this place, I, I feel the Lord was, was speaking to me this, this morning very specifically of that He's going to bring us in this meeting to a place of a vow where we can declare a vow. You see, Hannah made a vow with the Lord. Yeah. And the vow that she made of the Lord, God heard. And I, I want you to, I want to take us just there for a moment because I feel like the Lord is saying to me that He... He's looking at people, as we prophesied just earlier, that He's looking for harvesters, but people that means business of Him. People that are, that are like Abraham, because that, that can make that divine exchange. You see, listen, if, if Abraham held on to Isaac, he would have never seen the promise. Mm -hmm. If the father held on to Jesus, he would have never seen us. Right. Right. The Lord could have chosen to leave heaven completely empty, but He didn't. He chose us and He sent the Son. 
And I want to encourage you tonight to say this before I just share with you one or two things about the vow is that I feel like the Lord is saying, come back to that first place again. You see, the, the Lord says He wants us to be fruitful, not seedfully. God wants us to be at that first love again. And, and here's maybe just five things around a vow that I, I feel like the Lord is saying to us is that God wants to bring us back there. When you make a vow to God, a vow has got purpose. So in other words, a vow is a, is a very, very strong currency in the Spirit because you are, you are pledging something to God. And I feel like the Lord is, is wanting to take us there that you, you and I can pledge again and you and I can make a vow to God again. And first and foremost, I, a vow is, has got purpose. It has to have purpose to it. Secondly, a vow has to be specific, very specific. Why are you making a vow? Why are you making a declaration? There are business people on here right now, you are, you are listening, and I feel the Lord is saying to me that, that that vow that you want to make, it has to be specific because God wants to do commerce of you. God wants to do an exchange of you, but, but there has to be specification to it. Thirdly, you have to vocalize it. You have to make it known. You have to say it. You know, one of the things that I've, in our lives, in, in, in Shana, my life, we made a vow to the Lord uh, many years ago. I've, we've made a couple, but one of them was that, Lord, if you trust us of the currency of people, we'll serve you all the days of our lives. And so a vow is, is something extremely powerful, but it has to be vocalized. Fourth dimension of a vow is it has to be done by faith. It has to be done by faith. In other words, when you make a declaration, when you make a vow to the Lord, it has to be done by faith. Fifthly, it has to be done beyond our natural abilities. If you can do it, then it's not the Lord. Right. It has to have that God factor in it. Mm. Come on, people. It has to have yeah. that, uh, that factor where only the Lord can do it. Only the Lord can bring it to fruition. Only the Lord can, can do it. That's the power of a vow. And I feel like the Lord is bringing us back then as we, as we sit here. I, I want to give you an opportunity. I want to give you an opportunity to come back to that place of divine intimacy of Jesus. To coming back to the place because that's the invitation. But with that comes a free invitation from you and I that we can make the pledge. We can make the vow. We can make the declaration. We can say, Lord, I'm coming back. Lord, I, I, I'm coming home. You see, when the, when the prodigal son came home, there's something extremely powerful about that. When the prodigal son came home, he had, he had all of his... He had his little riddle. He, had his, he said, Father, I sinned against heaven. I sinned against earth. He had all of these things in place. But the father ran to him. That's right. And the father did three things for him. I want you to see what the father did. The father put a ring on him. Yeah. It speaks about identity, inheritance, position. The father put a cloak around him. It speaks about his mantle, which speaks about authority and power. And the father killed the fattened calf to celebrate that the son has come home. And tonight I feel like the Spirit of the Lord is calling you back home. I sense the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me that there's many wayward children that have, you're not where you're supposed to be. And God is calling you forth. God has positioned you. Right now I feel the oil of God coming upon business people. Business people are fresh. You've made vows to God. If you keep your vow, I sense God is saying, I will expand you. I will extend you like no other season. I will come upon your life where like a fervent fire once again. And I will burn afresh upon you. There are moms on here. You've given your children to the Lord. You've, you've vowed your kids to God. And I sense how God's going to put His hand upon your children and move with your kids in a, in a brand new way, in a, in a brand new dimension. And I, I sense, I can feel that I... I want to declare of your life tonight. And if that's you, if you say, Lord, I, I, I want to give you just a moment for that. Because when you do this, the Lord takes it serious. Yes. yes. These are not playful things in the spirit. Yes. When you make a vow unto God, you have to honor the vow. Because God wants that first place. You see, God is jealous. It's not a, it's not a worldly term, jealousy. God is a jealous God. Yes. Yes. He wants that first place. I sense something about this. I, I sense how the Lord is wants to release people afresh and anew. And, and there we are. I want you to pray for you. I want to activate the power of a vow over your life. And maybe you're listening right now. I, I see many names 
being committed. And if that's you, I want you just to say, I'm, I'm getting ready because I want to lead you into that. Right. I want to lead you just into that place of, of first love. You see, also, the Bible says, listen to this, Genesis chapter number 22, verse number 11, just before I lead you, it says, And the angel of the Lord called out unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that you fear me, seeing that you have not withheld thy only son, thy only son for me. I want you to see something here. The angel of the Lord called out to him and said, Abram, Abram, it is faith that comes by your ring. Mm -hmm. Your ring comes by the word of the Lord. Amen. If Abraham did not keep on listening to God, oh, that's good. he would have killed Isaac on a past revelation. That's right. That's right. And I feel like, and the reason why I bring that up is that I, I feel like the Lord wants to reactivate His voice in our lives. That's right. That's we will be able to hear the voice of God. Amen. Be able to understand the voice. And, yeah. and I'm looking yeah. at the screens. It's just, it's just it lighting up, up yeah. everywhere here. Yeah. But I, I feel like the Lord wants to restore His voice in your life. Yes. And there you are. For many of you, I feel like uh, the voice of the Lord is, is it, it might, have, might have drawn dim in your life. But God wants to restore His voice. God wants to restore that you can be able to hear that voice. And as you get ready, I want us just to, to mean business with the Lord. Now people on here tonight, I, I feel like you need to get ready to the shift of God. Yeah. And God wants to shift of you afresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we are before I minister to you prophetically, I, because the word of the Lord's already here, but I, I feel like the Lord just wants to bring you to that vow, that place where you say, Lord, I, I'm lining myself up again, because again I say, Abraham and the ram meets at that place of obedience. Right. My question to you tonight is before we go into the vow, is what are you placing upon the altar? You see, the thing is, is that you and I, we climb easily off an altar. We don't like altars because it's a place of crucifixion. But our Lord had an altar. His altar was His cross. My friend, I want to ask you tonight, what is your altar? Are you still on the altar? Or have you climbed off? Have you seeked other things? Or are you still at that place where you are on the altar and you have placed the Lord your God as first? I want you to note that, that God says, love me first. The, the right, Ten Commandments right. is broken up in just two single ones that Jesus summarizes. Love the Lord your God and love people. But we can't love people if we don't love the Lord. These two things are, are together. And so I want to lead you just into the vow. I feel the Lord going there. I want to lead you there that you can say, Lord, I, I bring myself to you again, to this first place. Because this is the place that God can birth the miraculous. You see, in Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse number 3, it says, The Lord made them to hunger so that He can produce wonders. May I prophesy over your life tonight that God wants to produce the wonders again. God wants to produce the miraculous again. God wants to produce the supernatural again. But it's based on your hunger for the first things. Make the Lord first again. Keep the vow. Keep the intimacy. Keep that place where you have said, where you've made the choice. I feel like there's people on here, Pastor, and I feel strong. Yeah, 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 the yeah. people have, people that you have lifted your hand from the plow. And I feel God is saying, no, put the hand back. Come on. Put that on. hand back. Yeah, I want to yeah, work yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I want to take you to that next dimension. And so I want to lead you in that. And why don't you pray this after me and just declare this. But I, again, I want to say, we have to mean business of God because we can't break a vow. It's a holy thing. It's a set aside thing. But God wants to restore that intimacy. He wants to restore that first love. And so I want to lead you in that. And then I want to minister to you because I saw one or two names that God spoke to me about. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. Lord is your people. And there we are. I want you to declare that. Say, Father, in the name of oh. Jesus, I, I come to yes. you. But Father, I, I vow. And there we are. I, I want you to make that personal. Whatever you feel, the Lord is leading you into to make that vow unto the Lord. Lord, I vow, and you name that vow. And Lord, with this vow, Lord, I declare my divine dependency upon you, God. I declare 
that Lord without this and, and again be specific be specific as you are out there have a purpose of what you are saying be specific vocalize it make it known as you activate your faith make that faith known to God Father I thank you that right now as people are making a declaration unto you that you see this in Jesus mighty name and I thank you Lord that in this place there comes a freshness there comes a newness there comes a, even right now, there's, there are women that are barren. I see barrenness disappearing. Thank you, Jesus. I see Jesus touching wombs. I see how the Lord lifts, lifts barrenness off people and restore fruitfulness back to you. Come back to me, says the Lord. Come back to me. Come back to that first place, that first love. Return there now in Jesus' name. There are people on here, I, you feel like, you feel like you are cursed. You feel like something is holding you back. And I feel like the Lord wants me to break that of your life. Thank you. Are people on here that yeah. I sense that you feel like you've been held up, that the dream has been taken hostage. Gosh. And I, I want to just pray for you right now. I, I want to just give you an opportunity. There's people that you and let me describe how you feel you feel like you've done everything but you're not getting to that place of breakthrough you feel that you're doing things right but you're not getting to that release and somehow along the line you you feel like there's there's for lack of a better word there's a curse operating over your life i feel like the lord wants to break that tonight thank you god thank you now people on here tonight very specifically i i see ancestral declarations that was made that has got power and the Lord wants to send a new word out of your life That's right a fresh word a word of release a word of freedom and if that's you I I want you just to comment your names so we're looking at all the different spaces but God breaks the anointing breaks the yoke right he doesn't discuss it he breaks it he breaks the yoke and I want to give you an opportunity just if that's you won't you just comment your name and say that's me that's me. I want to break that over your life. Jesus name. I see the people are commenting. Yeah. I want yeah. you to comment because Jesus wants to bring you back to that place of intimacy. Thank you, Lord. That place of covenant. That place of first love. You see the world around us, before I pray and, and just comment, I see the names. Put your names down, guys. Put the names down. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah. Pamela, I see you. Jennifer, I see you. Gersom, I see you. Uh, Heather, I see you. Taka, I see you. Esther, I see you. Uh, Maria, I see you. Just comment the names. You see, God wants us to bring us back to this place of intimacy. You know why? Right. The world around us, they need intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. They need to know that Jesus is in love. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. That's right. So I want to encourage you tonight that this word that I'm sharing with you is a word of love, but it's a word of intimacy. And so there we are as people are, are commenting, Caspa, I see you, Eben, I see you, Desiree, I see you, Agnes, I see you, uh, Tabila, I see you, Johanna, I see you. And may I, as a prophet tonight, may I break the power of this thing permanently and that you can accelerate into the new, into the fresh dimension that the Lord has for you. And just take time, guys. I see many people are commenting, go for it. Don't stop, go, go, go. Praise God. Praise just keep on commenting. Because the Lord wants to take you to that new place tonight. And I, I wonder if we can agree together that the Lord, because whatever is bound on the earth is bound in the heavens, right? Amen. When two or more agree, Amen. it shall be done. Amen. Simplicity of the gospel. Amen. So Father, as people are commenting right now, Lord, I declare, <laughs> and I see that the, the screens are, are just going oh. for it. Father, I thank you that right now, Lord, I, I declare a word of freedom over your people right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I come against every satanic spirit that I see that has declared a word of your people, Lord. I come against every word of declaration that was made by people, Lord. I break that power in this night in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I break the power, Lord, of spirits that have kept people captive, Lord, to former days, to former things. Lord, right now, I break that power by the authority assigned to us, Lord. And I declare of your people freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Lord, I break that power and I send it back to the sender, Lord. I send that power of those words back to the sender. There where the secrecies was made, there where the pacts were made, there where the covenants were made, I break that power tonight in the majestical name of Jesus. I break the ancient patterns. I break the patterns that the enemy has used over your life. I break the patterns that the enemy has used to come against you. I break it tonight in Jesus' mighty name. And there will be a new peace that will come to you. There will be a new freedom that will come to you. Yes, says the Spirit of the Lord. I'm bringing you into a wide open space. I'm bringing you into a new dimension once again. But right now I break that pattern in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord. We praise your name, Jesus. Because, I, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I see people being free. Right now, you would, you would feel that something lifted right. from you. Right. And if you felt the lift, I want you to testify. I want you to say, I felt it lift. I felt it lift. I felt it lift. I felt right. it lift. That's right. Because the Lord wants to bring you back. Praise God. The Lord wants to bring you back. Hallelujah. If I may, I, I feel the Lord is saying to me that there will not be a person that can be as bold without employment. Praise God. I feel like God wants His kids to stop begging for bread. Come on, come on. There's something that the Bible says the righteous do not beg for bread. You're right. That's right. They, we don't. It's just not who we are. You see, if my, if my daughter stands in front of the fridge, let me maybe say it like that, and um, she doesn't beg for the contents of the fridge because somebody else has paid for it. Right, right. She's a recipient she just takes it, yeah. of the goodness yeah. of the Father. And so I want to pray for people. If you are unemployed, I want to pray for you tonight. There's, there's an atmosphere of authority that we can shift you. I want to pray that over you, that you can shift out of that place. I even see promotion. I see people right now. There are business people. You, you're sitting with contracts in front of you. I see the spirit of wisdom coming upon you that you may be able to select and choose, right? But I want to pray for, for this. There, people are testifying. I right. felt it lift. Yeah, I felt it lift. I felt it go. No more begging. I felt it lift. I felt it lift. There, people are testifying. People are testifying. I felt it lift. I felt it lift. Father, I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we want to come against every form of unemployment in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you that, Lord, I can declare over people Hallelujah. right now in this space, in this place, Lord, that employment shall come in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that promotion happens right now. I thank you, Lord, that right now in this moment, that promotion takes place supernaturally in Jesus' yes. mighty name. Yes. Father, I come against this reports, Lord. I come against the, these things that people say and, and institutions declare, no, Lord, I, I see how you give employment. Father, I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. There's somebody watching me right now. You've received a report of cancer. You've received a report of cancer. And I hear the Lord say to me, not so. Yeah, not so. That's right. Not so. That's right. If you received a report of cancer, I want you to comment. I, I, sense it's, I sense one or two people. But I want you to comment right now that the Lord can heal you right now. Amen. There's something supernatural about the healing yeah, yeah. of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. That's you. Just take a moment, guys. Comment. I Thank you, Jesus. Just want to pray for you. I want to release that power over that's this. Right. That's right. Suddenly. If that's you. Get those comments in. Get guys, go for it. Go, go, go. And then I want you to get your bread in the cup. We've got a matter of minutes left with the TV audience. We'll carry on on social media. We'll just switch Stop over and sure. carry on on social media again tonight because of what God's doing. But I want you to get your bread and, and cup out right now because we're going to break bread as soon as we're done praying here. But right now, if that's you, if that's you, a report of cancer, a report of cancer over your body right now, a report anywhere over your body of cancer, just, 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 just write it, write it in there. Write it in the comments. Say, I have that report. Uh, that, that's the report over my life. All right. And we're going to pray. We're going to believe God, and then we're going to break bread together. Yes, Hallelujah. I see you. Yeah. The female throat cancer. I see somebody commented just here now about their daughter. Okay. I want to. I received a report of breast breast yeah, cancer. There. Winifred said. Come on. Yeah. I sense it was a couple. Guys, I want you just to comment right now. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord is present to heal. Present to heal. 
Presence to heal. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just keep on commenting, guys. I, I want to pray for you. If you're on TV, do it on Facebook, do it on YouTube. We're watching or do it on Faith Now. See, We're watching I, Faith I Now. I see you, uh, Pharrell. I see you, Cancer Report received. See you. I want to pray for you. We're going to declare, we're going to pray together tonight that that thing shifts permanently. Amen. Permanently. Listen, cancer yeah, is yeah, not yeah, of Jesus. Yeah. I want to make that very clear. God does not give sickness to His people to teach people anything. Absolutely. He doesn't need the devil to That's help right. him out. That's right. I want to say that again. The goodness of God is enough, folks. And by the way, the Bible doesn't declare I'm one time how we deal it. with unanswered prayer. Yeah, God yeah. answers prayer, full stop. And so there we are tonight. I, I want you just to lift your hands and, and that place that is affected Hallelujah. from this platform, I will release the healing virtue of Jesus. Come on. That, Come Lord, on. that the Lord can touch you. Right there we are. So Father, right now, in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Holy Spirit, release that healing virtue right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that right now, that your healing virtue, Lord, that that comes upon the people's bodies right now. I thank you that cancer dries up right now in the mighty, majestical name of Jesus. Father, I declare, I cancel this evil report in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I cancel this report. I break the power yes. of the root, yes. Lord. If I see the root systems of cancer, and I break the root systems off in the name of Jesus, and I speak healing to the body. I declare healing to, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Healing, healing, healing in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, that healing takes place right now in Jesus' name. You will feel like a sensation of burning in your body right now. And that sensation of burning is there because the Spirit of the Lord is replacing. He is removing. I even see how you feel movement in your body. You feel a movement happening right now. And that's the Spirit of God moving in these places. And I declare healing now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God. Lord, I receive the good report. And I give that good report to your people in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed Hallelujah. in Hallelujah. Jesus' name. It's a free gift. Be Hallelujah. healed. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed. Be Prophet, healed. Let's, let's go to the bread and the cup right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We do this every night. We We've got a couple of moments left with you, Bless you. on television. Mm. But there's going to be the prophetic utterance that we're going to carry on on social media just for a couple of moments again Thank after Jesus. we go off air tonight. Thank you. But Lord, we come before you, thank you, the body and the blood. Yes, Lord, thank you. Two thousand years ago, mm. victory became ours. Victory because of the cross of Calvary. Mm. And therefore we receive this victory meal right now in the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Every portion of your body, every area of your mind, everything that is in a place where you need God to come, yes. let Him begin to fill you right now. You. As you partake of these elements right now, may the blessing, the peace, the love of God, yes. Thank you. remembering who He is, the one that won the victory for you. Yes. You are free because of the blood of Jesus yes. and the body that was broken. Amen. So we receive our victory meal tonight. In Jesus' name, let's partake of the bread. Thank you. Receive the cup of blessing now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now listen, over the next few moments that we've got on air, and I, I don't want to break the flow in any way, but this is a time of seed. This is a time where you, That's right. as God's people, receive this Word. This has been a life-transforming Word, and you say, I've received this Word over my life. It's a Word of increase. It's a word of breakthrough. It's a word of blessing over your life. And the Bible says 
You receive that prophet in the name of that prophet, you get the prophet's reward. You, 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 this is what the Bible says. In other words, when the Word of the Lord speaks over your life, you do something. You do something, you respond. And so I want to exhort you today. I want to exhort you right now. Details are coming on the screen. And over these next few moments, of these details are on the screen till the end of this broadcast, I, I want you to do what God's told you to do. And I want you to put a seed in the ground, a seed of obedience, a seed of breakthrough, a seed of blessing in your life. Because the anointing of God is here. And if this Word, I, I believe this Word touched you, many of you responded, many of you. What you do is you go to myfaith.tv. You go to the website right there. There's many different ways to give. If you're in America, there's other ways coming on your screen even right now. Many different ways for you to give. And I want you to do that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You know, I just I also feel so strong in my heart, especially the whole theme of where we're going now is literally yeah. detangling ourselves from any affairs of the world. Yeah. And of anything that the enemy might have a hold on you in any way, there is such a strong call for the Lord Jesus saying to His church, detangle, detach, get rid of, get rid of any kind of affection that you would have with anything to do with this world because you are not of this world. And He's coming to take His bride, but we have to be detached. We have to be detangled from all of those things. And just like Abraham, when he presented his son Isaac, that was a detaching. Lord, not even that, not even that will come before you. Not even my love for my own son comes before my love and affection for you. And even when we give our offering, sometimes that's the exact same thing. It's the same thing. It's that, Lord Jesus, even my own earthly money, the you know, my own earthly means by which I feed my family, yes. by which I yes. meet the needs that I have. Those needs don't even come before my need to put you first. And so even in giving your offering today, I believe the same thing. Let's detach. It's showing God, God, I detach myself from any worldly wealth, from any attachment that I would have with this world. I put it under you. So my offering even in my finances is showing that my offering comes to your kingdom first. Yes. I seek yes. first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, knowing that all these things will come. He will take care of every single need you have. He loves you. So His desire is to see you in the living in the fullness Hallelujah. of everything yeah. in this life. But yeah, He blah, seeks blah, blah, first. Blah, blah. He wants to see your heart first. Yeah, and yeah, we yeah. literally, it's not just by thought, not just by word, but it's by action as well. Yeah. So as you give your offering today, I believe it's the same thing. Lord, I'm showing you, I give you everything first. I seek first your kingdom. And as I do that, I detach myself from anything else. It would put itself above the knowledge of you being my everything. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for every seed going in the ground right now. In the name of Jesus, every seed sown, multiplied back to the giver. That's right. Use it for your kingdom, Father. That's right. And Lord, we sow a seed into this Word, that this Word will become that revelation in our life and that we will operate in a new level like never before. Mm. In Jesus' mighty name. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, that seed, you put it in the ground. That's all on your screen. You know what to do. MyFaith.tv, wherever you are in the whole wide world, there's a way when you log on to that website, there's a way for you to give multiple different ways how to put that seed in the ground so you do what God's called you to do. Over the next one minute we've got left with you, cross over to YouTube. Yes. Cross over to Facebook and get onto Faith Now. If you are on Faith Now, if you're watching on the main channel on Faith Now, you need to change over to the stream channel. All right, we are on stream channel one. So we are going over from faith and now from the main platform where maybe you're watching, just go down a little bit in faith now and you'll find events channel stream number one. All right, that's where we're carrying on. So you don't even have to go off uh, on faith now. Events channel one on the stream. And I want to encourage you right now, get onto, get onto that stream right now. Get onto that special events channel. That's where we're carrying on on faith now. 
And uh, we are carrying on all over YouTube, Facebook. God is doing something. There's coming prophetic utterances for you. Don't go anywhere. In fact, join us right now. In fact, I would get over and I would get on right now. I wouldn't get off. I would get onto YouTube. That's right. I would get onto Facebook. I would get onto that stream right now. And just for the next few moments, Prophet's going to prophesy, speak over your life. There's words coming for you. Stay connected with us. And we want to thank you for joining us. So wherever you've been watching from, thank you so much. It's been glorious being this week on TV. Tomorrow, we'll be with you from South Africa Studios. Friday's the next. We'll be back next Monday again. And don't forget, Prophet Gebhardt will be with us on Sunday live from Faith Church Nables. We love you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Just stay with us right now. Stay with us. Come on, just stay with us. We're going, we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just flow. Guys, there we are. I, uh, and uh, you know, it's amazing for me is that this morning the Lord woke me up with 10 declarations. 10 declarations. Number 10 is uh, the number of governance, by the way. And um, there's 10 things I want to declare over you. And I want to just go through them one by one. And there we are. I want you to declare these with me. Declare these with me. The Bible, why is declaration so important? Because the Bible says, I declare a thing. I make it known. Right? So there's 10 things. The first one, I, I want us to speak over our families. I want us to declare it over our families. And as we go through them, what I want you to do is I, I want you just to write it into the comment section. In actual fact, I just want to pause for a moment and say that just take time quickly and um, just get other people on again and say, hey, if mom, dad, sister, brother, friend, etc., come just join us. Just join us right now. But there is something about the Word of the Lord. You see, the Bible says the Word of the Lord is double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. The word double-edged, of course, the word dextomos means, means two mouths. Mm. So God says something, we hear it, we declare it. Right. Now it's on two places, in the heavens and on the earth. And so there's 10 things. And again, I want to ask you, I see where people are jumping on. Right. I, I want you to ask for that. And I see these names running. But I, I want to declare 10 things and we'll go through them quickly. But I, as we go through them, I want you to put it into the comment section and make it known. This is, Pastor Andra, I feel the Spirit of the Lord is yes. going to move at, at this Come conference on. coming. Yeah. It's like the Spirit of the Lord just takes me there quickly. I, there's something coming. Praise Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, God's going to do something. Praise God. It's not going to be a normal conference. Yeah. I sense oil coming yeah. to East London. Hallelujah. I, I really sense that I, I, the, the Lord is, you know, as I sat here, the Lord took me into the Spirit there. I, there's something that's going to happen. And I didn't say this lightly, I really sense it. So, declaration number one I declare that I will see divine acceleration in my family and in my life in Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Come on, I want you to put that into the comment section. I declare, I declare that I will see divine acceleration, divine acceleration in, my family in my family and in my life. And in my life. Declaration number two. Now, I want you, there we are. I want you to speak that loud out, loud. Be loud today. Guys, there we are. You see, the enemy is not afraid to come in loud. And we must not be afraid to be yeah, loud yeah, right yeah, by. Yeah, yeah. I, de I declare that my finances shall increase and that promotion is my portion. Come on, come on. I'll say that again. I declare, I declare that my finances shall, shall increase and that promotion, and promotion is, my portion. is my portion. Third declaration, I declare, I declare that contracts, contracts and, favor and favor shall be released, shall be released in, my name, in my name and I will be debt free. And I, will be debt free. I will owe no man nothing but to love them in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty name. Declaration number four, I decree, I decree that all sins, that all sins will, not determine my future, will not determine my future as there is no more condemnation, no more no condemnation in, Christ Jesus. in Christ Jesus. Can you feel the atmosphere shifting on, in your room? Come, come on. on. 
I declare, I declare that I will gain new peace, gain new peace with, old enemies, with old enemies and restoration, and restoration is my portion, is my portion in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, I declare. Are oh. Their fingers are tapping fast. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I want to just speak again over your finances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will be debt free. In Jesus. You will be debt free. You will owe no man nothing. Thank you. I want to tell you that God is going to release finances supernaturally Amen. to you. Amen. And there we are. You will be debt free. Thank you, Father. We, we will not be enslaved to the system. We owe Babylon nothing. We have nothing to do with Babylon. We have got nothing to do with Egypt. Thank we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Thank you, Father. We then I want you to declare, say with me. And I, the guys are going, I, I, declare, <laughs> I declare that I will have favor. And gain favor with both man and God in this season like no other time. In Jesus' mighty name. I declare that my marriage, my children, and my extended family shall know the Lord and shall be saved. This is the year. This is the year of double portion. Of double portion. Of the anointing. Of the anointing. I will see the increase. I will see the of increase. more and more and more. Of more and more and more. In my spiritual life. In my spiritual life. To, to go, I declare, I declare that I will see new fruit, I will see new fruit in, dead places, in dead places and new abundance and, new abundance and previous, barren places. previous barren places. I declare, I declare that I will have a hunger, that I'll have a hunger and, a thirst and a thirst after the Lord my God. After the Lord my God. And that this year, and that this year the, Lord has set me up the Lord has set me up for the abundant overflow. For the abundant of more and more, of more and more in Jesus, in Jesus mighty, mighty name. name. Come on, there we are. Say hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Just Glory. declare that, say that. We went quickly through them. Quickly through them. There are people on here, I sense it so strongly as I see the names, that God is going to bear fruit of you. Yeah. The time of fruit is here. The time of fruit is here. Are people that I've, you've given, you've given, you've given in the past. I see, I see prayers as a memorial up before the Lord, and we know that out of the book of Timothy. But I, I sense the Lord says, I remember the prayers and the arms, and this is the season that you're going to bear fruit. The fruit is going to come. The time of no more fruit is that's over. Yeah, that's amen. gone. Amen. This is the season of fruit bearing. I want you to say that this is the season of fruit bearing. It's a fr season of fruit bearing. Fruit bearing. God, God is going to allow this fruit bearing. I, I want to prophesy this and I, yeah. I feel the Lord saying to me, there's somebody on this line tonight, you've been wrongfully accused. Mm. You've got a legal case that is against you. Wrongfully accused. And you have a legal case that is against you and imprisonment is seeming very real. But I feel like the Lord is saying to me tonight, as you listen, that God's going to turn that report around. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I see a judge tearing up the paper, tearing it up. I know I, I, I just sense that so strong. If that's you, I want you just, I'm going to wait for that because I feel like the Lord says you've been wrongfully accused. But uh, God wants to turn this thing around. Amen. Change it. So if that's you, I want you to just to come in and say, that's, that's me, I, I've been wrongfully accused. Come on, it's, uh, the Lord wants to save you from this that is to come. Because yeah. how will He make it known to me if He's not aware of you? He's aware of you. So, Pastor Andres, you watch on your oh, side, yeah, I'm watching yeah, you on yeah, my yeah. side. I'm, I'm waiting for that comment to run into the screen. Because you've been wrongfully accused. Jesus. You've been wrongfully accused. Guys are typing. I want you to type. If that's you, I want to just release this word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just want to wait for you. Thank you, Lord. I feel like the Lord wants to turn this around. Thank you, Jesus. 
And I will go to the womb, says the Lord. And I will touch the womb. Yeah. And I'll bring transformation power into the womb. I will touch the womb, says God. I see the hand of the Lord in the womb. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I want to declare this thing, Lord, because it comes to me now the third time. And Lord, you, when you repeat things, you are making them certain. My hand will come to the womb and I'll do a wonder. My hand will come to the womb and I will do a wonder. Father, we trust you now, but I release this word into the atmosphere so that it is known and it is said to God. It is said, it is known. There we go, there's people commenting. Father, I want to pray right now. There's a sister, she says, my brother in Port Elizabeth has been wrongly accused and there's a judge busy going at him right now. It says, so, um, I see a girl of Desiree, my husband's little brother has been wrongfully accused. Yeah. I want to Thank pray you, for Jesus. you. I sense this word about fruitfulness. Is there, is there, I feel that there's women on here, you are older in age and you have a desire for children. But it seems in the natural, this is not going to happen. And then I'm going to pray for this wrongfully accused. I feel like God says to me that tonight He can break the laws of the natural. Amen. He can break the laws of the natural. The Bible is full of God doing stuff like this. But I, I feel like you have a desire for child. Of course you have to be married for that. But I, I sense like the Lord wants to put fruit into the womb. You have a desire for, a ch- for children. And the Lord sees you. He sees you sees you. I want to pray for you right now. We have had many, many situations in our own ministry where we've seen people barren and then suddenly the Lord touches them and kids come. Children is a blessing of the Lord. And Father, I want to just pray as people are, Lord, I've just seen names, Lord. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Father, put seed into the womb right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for the seed in the womb. I thank you for life coming in Jesus' name. Thank you. The Lord is restoring laughter. Can we just push on those keys? But I sense the Lord saying, I'm restoring laughter. I'm restoring joy to you. The promise shall live. Thank you, Jesus. The promise shall live. And right now in the Spirit of Father, I take hold of this wrongfully accused. And Father, I tear this up in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, come on. I thank you that freedom is the portion. Father, I thank you that freedom is the portion in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I, I see just freedom coming over people. Lord, I, I sense that over that specific cases, Lord, where there was wrongful accus- accusations, Lord, that, that there is just, uh, that will dissipate, disappear, go away. Because the Lord will restore and bring freedom. And yes, says the Spirit of the Lord, that even right now, even right now, I turn the report back in Jesus' name. I turn the report back. I shift it. I change it in the name of Jesus. I just shift it for you. I shift it for you. There are people on this line tonight. I see how you've been longing for the Lord to intervene into your marriage. And that marriage is not where it's supposed to be. And I hear the Lord say to me, I will heal that marriage in this night. In Jesus' name, I'm putting my hand there. I'm reuniting families. And before Christmas comes, unification and restoration will be in place and the Lord will do this and you will rejoice and you will be glad in Jesus mighty name Thank you. you know Posanda I want to say this while we live there there's something supernatural about this church I there's something about an open heaven o- over Naples there's something that God has just done that's absolutely supernatural 
And I, I want to just say this again. I, I feel like the Lord is just saying it again to me. There's a, there's a glory cloud that's going to come here. Amen. And come and rest here. Amen. Because God has found a people that He can trust. I just sense it so strongly. There's, there's the glory of the Lord will be seen here and there will be an ascension and descension. You'll see angelic activity here in this place. And the Lord's just going to do this because He's chosen you. He's chosen the city. He's chosen this place. There's, there's something unusual. Thank you. Amen. just want to honor you. I, I sense it so strongly, so strongly. There, maybe it's the last thing that I feel in my heart tonight is that I feel like the Lord wants to put fresh oil upon people. Yes. Just fresh oil. Yes. Maybe you've been at a place where you've been dry, thirsty. Let's trust God tonight. The three of us are together and we can trust God to put fresh oil upon you. Come on, that's right. Now I want to declare over your life fresh oil, that you'll step into fresh oil from heaven and God will place it upon you. If that's you, I want you just to Throw that emoji of your hands, put it into that comment section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. And just make it part. Say, Lord, here am I. Put new oil upon me, Lord. Fresh oil. Fresh, fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. oil of intimacy. Oil of passion. And I, I want us to pray together. There we are. Put, those, put that up. Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. And I'm going to pray. Father, I, I want to thank you that right now, Lord, as I've shared about intimacy, Jesus, I, Lord, that you have brought us back to this place, God, right now. Lord, we want to declare over the people of God fresh oil in Jesus' name. Lord, mark them for your glory, Lord. Press them into your spirit. Mark them for more. Press them into your spirit, God. This I pray in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that every word that we've decreed cannot return to us void. Cannot return to your void, Lord. For there we have said a thing that is established in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for fresh hunger yes, and thirst. Yes, Lord. And every viewer that's online, yeah, yeah, I want yeah. to declare this word over you tonight. Be ready for the supernatural surprises of God. For I am about to surprise you, says the Lord. Be ready for the supernatural surprises of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. amen. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Wow. Oh, come on, just lift your hands wherever you are right now. The fire of God is present. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just worship just for a moment. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, power. Yeah. More of you in my life. Tonight has been truly a powerful night. And I know you've been watching from all over. I felt His presence, Prophet Gabbard, from the beginning to the end of this program journey. It's been like just an incredible time in His presence. Don't go. Don't go from that place. Stay in that secret place. Stay in that sweet spot. This is where He wants us to live. And uh, this is where He wants us to be. This is, this is the place He has for us. And I trust that those words that came out and what God spoke to you truly blessed you tonight. If it blessed you, just say, I'm blessed. Come on. If uh, Prophet Gabbard blessed you, come on, put it in the comments. Say, I am blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And when we've done what God tells us to do, that's when we move on into just the different direction of what He's saying to us. So I want you to do 
what God has spoken. All right, wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, many of you from Pastor Gebhardt's church right now as well. All right, I, I, I want you, I want you to say what a blessing he is to you right now. Come on, put it in the comment section. Hallelujah. All right, tell him you love him. All right, if you don't, if, if I don't have a hundred people telling me you love him, I'm going to keep him here. All right, and then, uh, you, you know, you can stay here longer. Amen. But uh, come on, just tell him you love him. And uh, we want to say thank you. Thank you for these three days of just the live TV with us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for, for just releasing what God has. I know we've still got Sunday. And uh, I know that that's going to be a special time for the local church yes. right here on Sunday. And, uh, and I know you're going to be blessed as well. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for going overtime with us. Amen. All right. But um, look how many people are saying they're blessed. I'm waiting for the love comments. You know, people telling them they love you. So <laughs> if I don't get a hundred people saying they love you, then you're going to stay here another week. Uh -huh. All right. There we go. There's so, a few now coming. <laughs> a few coming. Your wife better put her hundred yeah. comments there so you can <laughs> get home. All right. But uh, come on. That website again? www.empowerchurch.co.za Empowerchurch.co.za If you live anywhere in Johannesburg, you live or Pretoria, if you live anywhere in uh, Durban or Cape Town, that's where you want to be. Right. Empowerchurch.co.za All right, and uh, become a part of what God's doing. And also you can put a seed in the ground. I want to encourage everyone every one of the partners of Empower Church, you're watching right now. I want you to put a seed in the ground right now to Empower Church and say, God has blessed me and put in that reference bar USA. All right, that's your seed for sending your man of God right here, the prophet of God to come to be with us for this week. You put a seed in the ground and say, this is for the USA. This is for us being able to send him to be a blessing to the nations of the world. So we love you. We appreciate you. Come on, we're going to go out with one big song and uh, it's all over and uh, we are just blessing you and saying thank you for being with us. So come on, let's celebrate, Ben. Let's go out big and uh, we'll see you again on Monday right here live with us. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate you. Shalom. God bless you. Of the world, his blood breaks the chain.